So I've had this GMC Sierra Denali truck for two weeks now. We've had it on a long-term test. We've got a little bit longer to go, but I thought I'd do a first video report update on how we've been getting on with this beast of a machine. So I'm just going to run you through. Uh, this is not a review, so I'm just going to run you through. We've got reviews on the website. Go check out motoringandme.com. Uh, so I'm just going to run you some of the features that I kind of uh, have noticed in this car, I've liked, and... Uh, uh, and even maybe one or two that I didn't. So we'll start with this, the fuel economy, right? So uh, there you go. I've done uh, 1,080 kilometers in this car so far. That's since I've had the car. I've just filled it up. It's the second time I filled it up. First time I filled it up, I had to put 110 dirhams in the tank. I've just filled it up now and I put 125 dirhams in the tank. That 7.4 kilometer per liter average fuel economy equates to 13.5 liters per 100 kilometers fuel economy, about 20 miles per gallon UK. You might think that's a fair bit, but then don't forget, this is a 6.2 liter V8 massive engine massive grunt massive power and i might just temper that with this the 2016 honda civic that imtishan has just been testing for a few days was giving him 13.5 liters per 100 kilometers in addition to that tons of features inside the car automatic uh, lights are a real boon there's something here for towing obviously i haven't used that four wheel drive i really haven't had an opportunity to use that at all it's been in two wheel drive the whole time and uh two-wheel drive does allow you the occasional chirp or wheel spin dare I say uh, does it do wheel spin I don't know I haven't turned the traction off yet this isn't just got a heated uh, steering wheel on this one uh, I haven't had an opportunity to use that either but it has got forward collision alert there's a little light little uh, green or orange car that comes up there that lets you know if you're too getting too close or if you got if you're doing all right that's the cruise control and that just scrolls you through uh, the menu there and it gives you quite a lot of information the remaining oil life tire pressures, uh, you know, how your economy has been over the last 100 kilometers, how much fuel you've used in total. 1,300 liters have been used in this car in total over, what, 8,000 kilometers. And then it gives you the two-wheel drive meter and the angle. It gives you the pitch and yaw of the car. So when you're off-roading, that could be quite useful, um, telling you what sort of angle you're doing. There's 181 hours the engine has been running and all that sort of information. So that's all pretty handy. Uh, very comprehensive uh, center screen here. I do like it. It's very easy to use. All touch button, no issues at all. And it's got Apple CarPlay. So the moment you plug in this iPhone that I'm recording this on, uh, my uh, main features come up there and I'm able to use that as well. Um, good sound system, no issues at all. Uh, excellent climate control. Cools down this vast cabin surprisingly quickly. And look over here, I've got heated and cool seats as well the cool seats are quite nice uh, although the motor makes a little bit of a noise in the back seat um, lots of little toggle buttons here which are really nice this one adjusts adjusts the uh, the pedal distance so you can actually raise or lower the pedals depending on what you're comfortable with there's a traction off button there's a light for the rear bed that's parking stuff that's lane keep assist uh, obviously I don't use it I've kept it off because it's just annoying and hill descent control lots of power outlets two USBs two 12 volt power supplies and even a three point plug uh, input there deep deep compartment there two cup holders and there's also a charging port for uh, compatible phones i don't have one of those so uh, i don't do it but that's quite a handy thing to have a deep cubby box there and uh, two glove boxes here so one of the great things about this car is that there's always place to put stuff there's even a rubber thing there where you, i suppose you can put pens and things in there and like i said deep box down here you've got Again, you know, places to put bottles of water and stuff like that. I've got the ashtray there, which is not being used. Obviously, I don't smoke. Smoking is very bad for you. Um, but yeah, very, very, and a little, little, little compartment down there as well. So very, very practical. I do like that. Now, just before I leave the front cabin, I just wanted to mention one of the thoughtful, you know, one of those nice little touches that you don't know who or when or how they thought of it, but you think that's actually a really nice thing to do. One of the nice little thoughtful touches that I've noticed in this car is that obviously I immediately Bluetooth my phone uh, in any car I get into, and this one works extremely well. It's been very, very good. One of the things I've noticed that when you make or receive a phone call through this system, and you can either do that through Bluetooth or once you connect your car and, and to Apple Play, it automatically reduces the air conditioning fan speed to lower the sound in the ambient sound in this cabin to make it hear your phone call. That's actually really cool. 
Now, of course, this is the full-size, bad boy, big, full cabin, whatever you call it, uh, truck, which means, of course, it has a full-size rear bench, uh, loads of room, like tons and tons of legroom in there, uh, central armrest and all of it, loads of head. Oh, my God, let me just get into this thing. I'm going to cut to another clip. I just wanted to show you, I mean, I am six foot two tall. This is a pickup truck. You would think maybe the rear compartment would be slightly compromised. Um, not in this one. I mean, <laughs> look, I can't. Tons, I can stretch out. I've got tons of room, loads of headroom. I've got room to, I could play a game in here. We could play tennis with the people in the cabin at the front. People in the front, I look like they're so far away. It's like you, you need like an intercom to talk to them. This is how big this cabin is. And therefore, of course, I've had absolutely no complaints whatsoever from the kids um, because they get plenty of room here and they got plenty of room to put their drinks and their stuff and you know, paniferalia, and also they've got this little compartment down here where they can put stuff and, you know, whatever. The only one thing I would say, the only one thing I would say is that, and they've got lights here. They do have lights, which are quite nice, see that? But, however, the only one thing I would say that what would be quite good, what would be an addition for them to put in here for next time, is some rear AC vents. Um, the AC is very strong, and it does cool the whole compartment, so it's not an issue, but I think it might be, especially in the GMC Denali version, um, it would be nice to see some AC vents back here. Now, one of the most obvious things about this truck is its presence. I mean, just look at it. Would you mess with that? This, of course, is the updated 2016 model, and it has that very imposing grille at the front there. I do like it. I like it. I like the C-cut in the daytime running lights um, uh, sort of situation that they have here. And that sort of grille with its sort of very blocky, blocky frame that it's got, it's, it's, it's quite... It's got a lot of character there, and yeah, it definitely says, get out of my way, don't even think about it. Uh, of course, I drive it around like a perfect gentleman, but that's just me. Um, it does seem to be uh, quite low here at the front, and possibly, you know, it's got two big tow hooks at the front there. That's a metal bumper, uh, but that chrome bit, I think, is plastic. Um, this bit here, probably, um, you know, it can be removed, and I think maybe in future they should think of putting a shorter version or something that's a little bit more flexible. For example, I have not been off-road in this truck at all, but as you may be able to tell, just on that leading edge at the right, just next to the tire, you can see it's starting to come away already. So, um, you know, but like I said, the, you do have the option to just remove it altogether and just be done with it, which uh, I hear is probably best if you're gonna do any off-roading in the sand. The wheels fit really well with this car, I do like that. You know, the whole thing is massive. I mean, look how far back I have to walk just to get that into shot for you. And then if I come up to the side of the truck, you know, okay, let's walk along the truck. Yep, still walking, still walking. So, the, oh my God, I'm getting tired. This is such a long walk, flipping heck. Blimey, look at that. There's a nice feature, little side step. So a lot of people go with like two rather convoluted little bars that have to come out that enable you to climb up onto the bed. Not this one, this just gives you side steps on each corner, which are quite handy. It does have a side step to get into the cabin as well, which to be honest, I have used, and I think my wife has certainly used, and my kids have certainly used. That's quite handy. These don't fold away. I don't know if that's an option on, on some of these trucks, because I'm sure I've seen them fold away. Certainly in like the Cadillac uh, Escalade, I've seen them fold away, but these ones don't. Uh, no big issue though, not a big issue at all. And there's your petrol tank, which um, is not as thirsty as you might think. Not too bad at all. There's one thing that confuses me. That little thing on the top there, I'm assuming that's a kind of GPS sensor and stuff like that. Couldn't they have put the aerial in there as well instead of giving us this really kind of traditional aerial? Um, yeah. Quite tall actually, maybe we can stick a flag on there. So obviously considering the size of this thing and one of the things I was really worried about running this as a daily vehicle uh, was the fact that how am I going to park it more specifically? How am I going to fit it into malls and places like that? Well, honestly, I've kind of avoided it a little bit to be honest, but I have been in a few malls and uh, sure enough, I have done something that I dread doing and I hate doing and I try to avoid doing desperately, especially on press cars, which is I have touched the, the wheels on the curbs. However, I think I've been quite lucky, or maybe this is the way that these trucks are designed. If you look at this wheel here, for example, behind me, and you look at the rim, the rim is quite inset into that tire, and the tire is really thick and the tire walls. Maybe if I come from this angle, you could maybe see it a little bit better. You see what I mean? You see that? So the, the, wheel, the wheel rim is actually quite inset, 
and the, the tire rim, the tire wall, this bit, pops out quite a lot, uh, especially down here. So if I put you right down here, you can see that if you are going to curb something, you're not going to rub the rim, you're going to just rub the tire, which is not too bad. Alternatively, of course, you just drive over the curb. Also, while I'm down here, just notice this other thing. I've just noticed this here because I had the car washed earlier and I noticed this. This bit here is smooth. This bit goes rough. So I think that's a bit of extra rough proofing or protection for the bodywork of the car. Also easier to just clean the grime off there. So yeah, another nice touch there. Another thing I wondered about this car is what are these for? These little holes. And I'm assuming they're to hold some sort of thing or uh, might be. They're for another reason altogether because if you re remember, there's a step there, there's a handle there. So effectively, all I have to do if I can hold the camera and do this at the same time is just climb easily up into the cabin bed like that. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're for, or at least that's what I'm claiming them to be for. So two weeks with this truck, really enjoyed it, turning into a bit of a trucker. Uh, it feels really comfortable. I've been to Abu Dhabi twice in this thing and the fuel economy is so good. It's absolutely a shocker. You think, why are you driving this to Abu Dhabi? You're like, yeah, well, actually, it's better than that Civic that Imtijan has. And uh, it's been so comfortable and so enjoyable to drive. It's always great to just get in and just cruise around, just burble around a little bit. Uh, a bit more engine noise would be good, but then, you know, it shuts off with cylinders. It runs on four cylinders most of the time. So it's being very, very efficient and very, very clever. Uh, all around, a fantastic video for kit. Keep watching us, um, following us on our social media channels on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram for Motoring Middle East. You can also follow me on my personal Snapchat account where I'm putting up stuff on this truck. Uh, you can find me by going, I think it's Shazad underscore Sheikh and you'll find me. And of course, you'll be able to read about this on motoringme.com. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.